Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Ofer Berman. I'm a researcher at the Design Tech Lab. Uh, today I show you part of my research called Digital Tabular Coral. Uh, this uh, research is advised by Professor Reza Terezi from the Technion and uh, Professor Nadav Shashar from Eilat campus of Ben Gurion University. Coral reefs are one of nature's most diverse ecosystems. Occupying only 0.1% of the area in the ocean, yet supporting 25% of all marine species on the planet. They contain more species richness per unit area than any other aquatic environment. In the last 40 years, more than 50% of coral reefs in the world have been degraded or died. In the next 40 years, research Researchers estimate that about 70% of them will die off completely, completely or will be degraded. When a reef begins to die, it affects a wide range of benthic and pelagic animals. Slowly, all the important reef species begin to leave the coral reef. Increasing water temperature, illegal fisheries, and damage caused by recreational diving are three of the main causes of damage coral endure. Animals lose their habitats, while economics reliant on marine, on marine life suffer greatly. In an attempt to prevent reef degradation around the world, marine biologists have developed methods for their rehabilitation. Coral gardening, coral nurseries, and artificial reefs are an example for that. In coral gardening, a fraction of corals is gathered and planted in, in a controlled environment to encourage their growth. When they reach the minimal height required, they, they are transplanted to a natural or artificial reef. Artificial reef function as new habitats for destroyed mar marine areas, giving back shelter for many species that lose their homes. These are a few examples of current artificial reef structures made from a variety of different methods. This is Tamar Artificial Reef, initiated by Professor Nadav Shashar. This is a, a modular structure made of concrete and steel, set to the ground in the Gulf of Elat in 2012. After its deployment, it was planted with restored corals. The goal of this artificial reef is to embed a wide range of hideouts creating shadows and preventing sediment accumulation. Um, so in our research, we chose to focus on the tabular variation of Acropora. This genus of coral served as our reference. Acropora is widespread in the Gulf of Elat. The tabular structure of the coral is kind of a lattice structure and stands freely on a base. Research in 2012 from David Bellwood shows that among the three main structure categories of corals, massive, branching, and tabular, the tabular variation attracts the largest biomass of species for the longest time. He then compared between natural tabular coral to a clear and opaque tabular structure. He found that reef fishes prefer to stay underneath the shadow of the opaque structure, as they do in the natural tabular corals. The shadow function as a safe environment and help reef fishes either avoid predators or ambush their next meal. These are the two morphological features that have guided our research, the, lat the tabular lattice structure and the shadow beneath it. The benefit of using 3D printing give us the ability to develop designs and create a wide range of shapes and complexities. Working with clay gives us the opportunity to use a material that is natural and will not have harmful effect on nature. The clay is only burned in the kiln once in order to maintain its porosity, which is beneficial in a marine envi <coughs> environment. We design a three-dimensional model of a tabular structure joined to a column. It was 3D printing using a slicing software. Then we realized that we needed to find a better method to print our artificial corals. The printing time was extremely long, 
and the weight shadow, shadow ratio was bad. In order to compete with the scale of a natural reef, it was important to find a morphological solution to make the pr printing process more efficient. There are great benefits using direct printing. We can design using not only a volumetric model, but instead the machine pass, which can extrude the material. This method allowed us to create a wide range of corals with a single click of a button. The formative principle we relied on was a spirograph, or referred to by its mathematical name, hypotrochoids. By its very nature, it is built as an endless curve, but what simplifies the machine operation and its general shape is its similarity to the tabular form of a natural coral. By manipulating the initial curve, we achieve the variable lattice structure, ending up with an artificial design to our tabular acropora. Here you can see the correlation between the nozzle height and the character of the tabular lattice structure. On the upper row from the left, the nozzle located are the highest, and on the right is the lowest. On the lower row, you can see example of selective nozzle height manipulation. This image shows a different variation of the machine tool passes. And here you can see the physical outcomes. Again, sure. Evaluating an artificial reef is something that requires the right skills and knowledge as well as time. However, creating tools for measuring the biological and physical impacts of an artificial reef on the natural environment could add to the growing field of reef restoration. In the last few months, we conducted three tests for better understanding our design motives and direction. We wanted to be able to predict the biological behaviors of, nat of nature reacting to our designs. We created four clay models with, with virtually the same surface area as the selected skeleton of natural acropora. The pattern and curve lengths are also the same between the models. The only thing differentiating them is a, selective, is a selective manipulation from which the clay will fall. Inside the experiments, there are three tests happening. We used sucrose candies to test how much water will flow through the models. All the candies were numbered and weighted before the entering the flow canal. We found the half-life duration of the candies for calibrating the intervals on which they are deposited on the models. We then, we then ran the test on each of the five models. After each interval, we took out the candies and calculated the delta weight. We used filtered and weighted the amount of sediment taken from the Gulf of Elat. The sample were then distributed above the models. Each model was placed in a water tank laid in a water column, above two buckets in the same size, placed one above other. We cut the bottom of the upper bucket to allow the sediment to fall down and be collected. By weight of the collected sediment, we estimated the amount left on the models. We used a high-speed camera to capture the movement of Artemia eggs around the surface of the models. A screw rod was set on the model to set the focus area in order to calibrate the image. A special program extrapolated the movement of the eggs around the models and illustrated the boundary layer of each model in the flow canal. Each model created its own boundary layer and we compared it to the boundary layer of the acropora. We are currently working on scaling the experiment into a fully functional 3D printed habitat. Our idea is to create a colony of our artificial tabular corals to try to mimic the natural structure of a reef. 
This is an, an ongoing experiment that will include survey of reef fish and larvae. Measurements of physical impact of the reef on its surroundings and understanding more about the impact this artificial reef design could have. Next week, we will bring it to Katza Beach in Elat for the first test. Thank you for listening.